Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to our today's business studies lesson here on KU TV. My name is teacher Kelvin Woody from Bethlehem Senior School. The topic that we'll be dealing with today is a very interesting topic called insurance. So our subject is business studies. And the topic we'll be dealing with today is the topic of insurance. Uh, my dear students, I know that uh, you've experienced many cases of insurance. You've heard that before someone is allowed to drive a vehicle, you must have an insurance. You've also heard of NHIF, which is National Health Insurance Fund, that is insurance. But have you ever asked yourself, what is this that we call insurance? Today I'm here to educate you so that you may learn on what insurance is. And therefore, to start with, we'll define the term insurance. So our objective is definition of insurance. We'll also define another term that is insured. We are also going to define another term that we'll be using, that is the insurer. We'll also define the term premiums. Then after that, we look at pooling of risk. Pooling of risk. Then we look at the importance of insurance. Importance of insurance. And we'll also today look at the principles the principles of insurance. That is for today. Insurance is a very wide topic, and therefore these are the objectives that we are going to achieve today. So to start with, what is insurance? What is insurance? Insurance is a contract between an insured and an insurer. It is a contract between an insured and an insurer where the insured transfers his financial responsibilities to the insurer. So we are saying that insurance is uh, uh, the contract, contract between the insured and the insurer, and the insurer, where the insurer transfers, where the insurer transfers his financial responsibilities, financial responsibilities to the insurer. So we're saying that we'll define the term insurance and the term insurer. So we are saying that insurance is a contract, and a contract is an agreement. So insurance is an agreement between two parties. And the parties involved is the insured and the insurer, where the insured transfers, where the insured transfers his financial responsibilities to the insurer. What do we mean when we say that the insured transfers his financial responsibilities to the insurer? In case of a loss occurring, it is the insurer who is going to pay the insured. Who are these people that we are calling insured and insurer? Therefore, we need to define who is an insured. An insured, this is an individual, individual or organizations. This is an individual or an organization that takes an insurance cover that takes an insurance cover, that takes an insurance cover with an insurance company, with an insurance company. So we have saying that insurance involves two parties. There is the insurant and there is the insurer. So we have saying that the insurant is the individual, as an individual, or an organization, that is a business or a company, that takes out an insurance cover with an insurance company. That is what we call an insurant. Now, who is an insurer? 
An insurer now, this is the insurance company. This is the insurance company that, this is the insurance company that compensates, that compensates the insurant in the event, in the event of occurrence, the event of occurrence of a risk, of a risk. So these two terms are very important because as we have said, insurance is a contract. This is an agreement between two parties and the parties involved is the insured and the insurer. Where the insured, now the person who takes an insurance cover, that is the insured, transfers his financial responsibilities to the insurer, that is the insurance company that takes to compensate the insured in the event of a loss occurring. So having known who an insured is and who an insurer is, then to understand this topic will be very, very easy because it's just an agreement. It's just a contract between two parties. And the two parties is one party that has taken an insurance cover and the other party is the one that is going to compensate you, the insured, if the loss occurs. What is this that we are calling compensation? Compensation simply means paying you back or returning you to your former financial position. Before the loss had occurred, maybe the value of your property was 400,000. After the loss had occurred, value of the property worth 300,000 is destroyed. So the insurance company or the insurer is going to return you back to your former financial position of 400,000 and that is what we call compensation. Now, uh, those people who have taken uh, NHIF, we say the NHIF is an example of insurance policy. There is some money that they pay every month, uh, maybe 500 shillings, maybe 700 shillings, depending on the amount of income that they earn. So an insurance, this is the person who has taken an insurance cover, must pay some amount of money to the insurance company regularly. And that is what we call premiums. And therefore, the next term that we are going to define today is the term premiums. What are premiums? Premiums are regular amount of money paid by the insured to the insurer. Premiums are regular amount of money. Premiums are regular amount of money, amount of money paid by the insured. Remember we said the insured is the individual taking out the cover. So this is the regular amount of money paid by the insured to the insurer, to the insurer, to cover the risk insured against, to cover the risks insured against. So as we have said, as an insured, you have taken an insurance cover with an insurance company. You must pay regular premiums you must pay some amount of money regularly to the insurance company so that in case of a loss occurring, the money that you as the insured have been paying to the insurance company and other insured has been paying to the insurance company will be used to compensate you or to return you back to your former financial position. So if you are told to define what premiums are, these are reg regular amount of money paid by the insured to the insurer to cover the risk insured against. So different insured or different people, individuals or organizations, they take insurance covers in different insurance companies. And for instance, if we have an example of Jubilee Insurance, Jubilee Insurance is an example of an insurance company that you know. Jubilee Insurance has covered risk from different insurance, 
has covered risk from different insured or different individuals and organizations. So all these individuals or organization that have taken an insurance cover with Jubilee Insurance, they are going to pay premiums to this insurance company. Let us get it well. We are saying that premiums are regular amount of money paid by the insured to the insurer to cover the risk insured against. And we have said that if we have an example of Jubilee Insurance, there are different people who have taken an insurance cover with this Jubilee Insurance Company. And therefore, all these insured, all these individuals or organizations that have taken an insurance cover with Jubilee Insurance are going to be paying premiums to this insurance company company what will happen now all these companies are, are are and individuals and organizations are paying premiums to jubilee insurance what is jubilee insurance going to do with all this money that is paid by the insured jubilee insurance being an example of an insurance company Different people have insured their businesses in Jubilee Insurance and they are paying regular premiums in this company. So the company will take all that money that is paid by different insured and create a common pool of fund. And create a common pool of fund. This is what we are saying. When you pay premiums to an insurance company, you are not alone as an insured. There are other people who have taken an insurance cover with the same company. All of you as the insured are going to pay premiums to the insurance company. The insurance company will take all this money that you have been paying to the company and create a common pool of fund. In short, they will open an account for all the premiums that are paid by the insured. When they open that account, which we call creating a common pool of fund, that is what we call pooling of risk. That is what we call pooling of risk. And therefore, pooling of risk, pooling of risk is a common pool of fund created by the insurance companies from the regular premiums paid by the insured. Let me illustrate how pooling of risk works. This is uh, an insurance company here. This is an insurance company. The insurance company is being paid premiums by different insured. Let's say insured A pays 2,000 shillings. Insured B pays 5,000 shillings. Insured C pays 10,000 shillings. Insured D pays 15,000 shillings. E pays 20,000 shillings. And insured F pays 35,000 shillings. So these are different insured. If you get to see this illustration, this now is the insurance company. These are different insured. Insured A, insured B, insured C, D, E, F. They have paid different premiums to this insurance company. And then the insurance company has taken all these premiums or money and deposited it in a common pool of fund. And this is what we are calling pooling of risk. So these 35,000 of insured F will be there. The 2,000, the 20,000, the 15,000, the 10,000, the 5,000, and the 2,000. So you can see the illustration. Different insured, A, B, C, D, E, F, have paid premiums to the insurance company. And the insurance company has taken all these 
premiums and deposited it in one account, the common pool of fund. We call it pooling of risk. But I have a question. Now that insured A, insured B, and insured E, C, D, E, F have paid premiums to the insurance company, are all of them going to suffer risk? Are all of them going to suffer losses? If they are insured their businesses against damage by fire, are all their businesses going to be damaged by fire? The answer is no. Not all insured who suffer losses. You may be paying premiums forever and you will never suffer losses. If you don't suffer losses, then there is no compensation. So not all these insured, A, B, C, D, E, F, will suffer losses. Only a few will suffer losses. If the few suffers the losses, we call that claim. So there is now another arrow here that you see. This is called claim. And in this claim, 20,000 shillings from the common pool of fund has been used to compensate the person who has suffered a loss. The person who has suffered a loss here is insured B. How much had insured B paid from the illustration? Insured B had paid 5,000 shillings. How much was the loss? The loss is 20,000 shillings. Where did the company get this money to pay the 20,000? Yet insured B had only paid 5,000. The company gets the money from the premiums paid by the other insured who have not suffered the loss. And therefore you can see that is one benefit of this, what we are calling pooling of risk. So this is a good illustration of pooling of risk. In an exam, my dear student, you can be asked to describe the benefit or the importance of pooling of risk to an insurance company. And therefore, that is what we are going to discuss right now. We've gotten the illustration of pooling of risk. Therefore, let us get the benefit of this pooling of risk to an insurance uh, company. So benefit of pooling of risk to an insurance company, that is our subtopic. Benefit, benefit of pooling of risk to an insurance to an insurance company. My dear students, with this illustration, it's easy to get the benefit of pooling of risk to an insurance company. One benefit of pooling of risk is that it enables the insurance company to create, to create a common pool of fund, a common pool of fund, pool of fund from regular premiums, regular premiums paid by the insurance, paid by the insurance. That is one benefit. That the common pool of fund enables, that is the pooling of risk enables the insurance company to create a common pool of fund from the regular premiums paid by the insured. The second benefit is we have seen that this insured B has suffered a loss of 20,000. Where will we get the money to compensate that person is from this pooling of risk. Therefore, the second benefit is it helps the insurance company to compensate, to compensate, to compensate the insured, the insured who suffers, who suffers a loss. So from the common pool of fund, from the pooling of risk, the insured who suffers a loss is going to be compensated using the amount of money that is in the common pool of fund. Another benefit of pooling of risk, it enables the insurance company to reinsure itself. Enables the insurance company to reinsure itself, to reinsure itself with another insurance company, with another insurance company. 
towards the completion of this uh, uh, topic, we'll get reinsurance to know more about what reinsurance is. Reinsurance is whereby, in most cases, the government policy requires that every insurance company reinsure itself with another insurance company. What do we mean by reinsurance? Reinsurance means insuring again. I, Kelvin, is the insured, has gone to Jubilee Insurance Company. I have taken an insurance cover against damage of my property by fire. But the insurance company considers that the value of my property is too high. And in case it's destroyed by fire, the company may not be able to compensate me. So what is the company required to do? The company, let's give an example of Jubilee Insurance, is going to reinsure itself or take an insurance cover with the Kenya Reinsurance Company. Kenya Reinsurance Company, it is a company that is specifically insures insurance companies only. So if the insurance companies insure itself with the Kenya Reinsurance Company, it will require to be paying premiums to the Kenya Reinsurance Company. Where will this insurance company get money to pay premiums to Kenya Reinsurance Company from? It's going to get the money from the pooling of risk. And that is a benefit of pooling of risk. Enables the insurance company to reinsure itself with another insurance company. And this in Kenya is called the Kenya Reinsurance Company. Another benefit of pooling of risk, it enables the insurance company to spread the risk. It enables the insurance company to spread risk among the insured. To spread risk among the insured. What do we mean by spreading risk? Back to our illustration here. Insured B had paid 5,000 shillings as premiums. But insured B has suffered a loss of 20,000 shillings. Is insured B going to be compensated? The answer is yes. Now that he had only paid 5,000 shillings and he has suffered a loss of 20,000 shillings, where will the company get money to compensate him or her to 20,000 shillings? The company will get the money from the common pool of funds. That is what we call spreading of risk. The person who has suffered a loss had paid less amount of money than the loss that has occurred. But there are other people, insured C, had paid 10,000. He has not suffered loss. Insured A had paid 2,000. He has not suffered a loss. Insured F had paid 35,000. He had not suffered. He has not suffered a loss. Therefore, the risk of 20,000 shillings will be spread to all these other insured who have not suffered the loss. And therefore, their money is the one that is going to be used to compensate you who had suffered a huge loss, yet you had paid less premium. That is what we call spreading of risk among the insured. So, benefit of pooling of risk, one is that it helps the insurance company to spread risk among the insured. My dear students, insurance company is a business. It has employees. There are people we call actuaries in insurance companies. And actuaries are the people who are employed to calculate premiums to be paid and also to compute the losses that have occurred. These actuaries must be paid. They don't volunteer, they don't just work for volunteer, they are paid. This company has people who wash. They have people who uh, do repairs of, 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 the, of the vehicles there. These people need to be paid. The company has electricity. Electricity bills need to be paid. Where will the company get this money to pay all this? They'll get it from the common pool of funds. And therefore, another benefit of pooling of risk is it enables the insurance company to meet all its operating costs. To meet all its operating costs. 
or its operating costs. The costs that I've discussed are the costs that it meets. So it enables the insurance company to meet all its operating costs. My dear student, not all this money that is going to compensate the insured. Because in our case here, out of 35,000, 20,000, 15,000, 10,000, 5,000, and 2,000, only 20,000 is used to pay those who have suffered the loss. The remaining amount of money, we call it surplus, the excess. After we have compensated all the insured, after we have met all our operating costs, after we have paid premiums after reinsuring ourselves, there is that amount of money that remains. It's called the surplus fund. Where do we take it as the insurance company? The surplus fund is invested in. So the surplus fund is invested, surplus fund is invested in, is invested in. How does an insurance company invest in this? The excess amount of money, the insurance company can invest in it by buying and selling off shares. So they can get into other businesses. Using the excess premiums that was paid, they can venture into investment or into other businesses. And therefore, my dear student, if you are asked the benefit of putting of risk to an insurance company, uh, you will be able to discuss all these benefits. These are six benefits of putting of risk to an insurance company. An insurance company is very important. Therefore, the next thing that I want us to look at is the importance of insurance company. Now you've understood the benefit of putting of risk to an insurance company. Let us get to understand what is the importance of insurance company. Why is insurance in general, not, not necessarily the company, but why is insurance important? Why are you encouraged to take an insurance cover? How is it important? Let us look at the importance of insurance. The importance of insurance. Importance of insurance. That is our next sum topic. Importance of insurance. Importance of insurance. One importance is employment creation. Uh, I'll just highlight them, then I'll explain. Employment creation, that is one, importance of insurance. Two, revenue to the government. Revenue to the government. Three, create confidence in investors. Create confidence, confidence in investors. Investors are entrepreneurs. They are business people. Four, ensures continuity. Continuity in business. Five, it encourages savings. Encourages savings. Six, encourages in Investment encourages investment. Uh, my dear students, these are the importance of insurance. You can continue sending your questions or even your comment to the number that is on your screen. One is employment creation. Insurance company is a business that requires workers, employees, the actuaries, people to pay premiums. When people pay premiums, these premiums will be calculated by the actuaries. It requires people to wash. Those people who could have been jobless, they get employment opportunities in the insurance company. So that is one importance. It enables the insurance company to create employment to people who could have been jobless. The next is revenue to the government. Revenue to the government. Insurance, as a result of coming up with an insurance company, the insurance company will be paying taxes 
to the government. The insurance company requires a license to operate. And therefore, for you to get a license to operate, you need to pay to the government for the license. As an insurance company, as a business, you need to pay taxes, direct and indirect taxes. You need to pay the taxes to the government. And therefore, as a result of insurance, the government is able to earn revenue through the taxes that have been paid or even the licenses fee that have been paid. Another importance of insurance is creates confidence in investors. Investors are business people. They are business people who have business ideas, but they fear to venture into those businesses because of the risk that are involved in those businesses. So as a result of insurance, the investors or the business people or the entrepreneurs will be encouraged to venture into more profitable but risky businesses. Listen here, more profitable but risky businesses. So they are businesses that will earn a lot of profit, but they are risky. They may take you to great losses. So as a result of having insurance, these investors will not fear. They will have confidence to venture into these more profitable but risky businesses. Why? Because they know even if the businesses are risky, if the loss occurs, the insurance is going to compensate them and they will continue with the business. So they will not fear, but they shall have confidence to venture into these more profitable but risky businesses because they are assured of compensation. The next importance is uh, continuity in business. If you've taken an insurance cover against loss of your property or damage of your property by fire, let's say you are operating a business of selling bread, and then you've taken an insurance cover with an insurance company to cover your bread against damage by fire. Then one day, fire occurs, and all your brand is damaged by fire. The importance of insurance is that you will not stop operating your business. Why? Because the insurance company is going to compensate you and give you a chance to continue operating your business. And therefore, that is an importance of insurance, continuity in business. Businesses will not stop, even if losses occur, because they are assured of compensation that will make sure that they proceed operating their business, even if the loss occurs. Encourages savings. There are different policies that we'll discuss maybe later on. There are different policies in insurance. One is endowment policy, that is in life assurance. We have endowment policy. And endowment policy, mostly it encourages savings because this is whereby you pay regular premiums, then after a given period of time, you are going to be given a certain amount of money. So insurance acts as a savings scheme. You deposit your money to the insurance company where maybe you have taken an endowment policy then after expiry of agreed period of time, you are going to be given a certain amount of money. And that, that, therefore, that is an importance of insurance. The last importance of insurance that we are discussing is investment. We said that not all premiums that are paid to the insurance company that are used up in compensation there is the surplus fund. That is the excess amount that have remained. That amount is used by the insurance company to invest or to start other businesses. And therefore, my dear students, those are the importance of insurance. Employment creation, revenue to the government, create confidence in investors, 
continuity in business, encourages savings and investment and investment. So every person, every organization, every business has its principles. This being the importance of uh, uh, insurance, insurance has its principles. And therefore, my dear students, let us look at the principles of insurance as we are moving towards the end of our lesson today. Principles of insurance. There are six principles of insurance. There are six principles of insurance. Let us discuss them. Principles of insurance. This is an important question that you can be asked in business. When it's asked in paper two, you must know how to explain well. Because paper two, my dear student, it, is test, it tests how adequate, how, fl uh, how fluent, how efficient can you explain your point. So principles of insurance. Principles are the code that govern an insurance company. The rules that governs, the rules and the regulations that governs an insurance companies. One principle is the principle of utmost good faith utmost good faith. According to the principle of utmost good faith, the insurant is supposed to disclose honestly all the information required by the insurance company without lying. Any dishonest information given by the insurant to the insurance company may make the insured not to be compensated despite the loss occurring. So at most good faith, even if as an insured, even if your talent is lying, you know there are people who like lying, that is their talent. Even if your talent is lying, when you get to the door of the insurance company, get born again and give all the information truthfully because dishonest information will lead you not to be compensated. My dear student, I'm not just teaching you for the sake of the exam, but for the sake of your future in investment. Make sure that you give truthful and honest information to the insurance company. If you lie that the value of your property is one million, yet the value of your property is 900,999, then you are not going to be compensated. You lied on the value of your property with one shillings. Be very honest, be very keen, be very accurate to the information that you are giving. The other principle of insurance is the principle of indemnity. Principle of indemnity. According to the principle of indemnity, the aim of insurance company is to restore back the financial position of the insured, but not to make profit. Listen very well. The aim of the insurance company is to take back or to return back the insurance, the, the insured back to his former financial position, but it's not to make a profit. That is indemnity. The other principle is the principle of subrogation. According to the principle of subrogation, after the loss have occurred, the remains becomes the property of the insurance company. An example of subrogation. I have my land cruiser that I left outside there. So if my land cruiser experiences an accident, and it's totally damaged. I'll take my rad cruiser to the insurance company where I take an insurance cover, maybe Jubilee Insurance Company, CIC Insurance Company, Kelvin and Sons Insurance Company, and then I'll be given a brand new land cruiser. The remains, that wreckage that was destroyed will now become the property of the insurance company. That is the principle of Sabro. After compensation, the remains become the property of the insurer or the insurance company. The fourth principle is the principle of insurable interest. 
the principle of insurable interest. According to the principle of insurable interest, the insured can only cover or take an insurance cover against a property that he or she is having a direct gain from. You cannot take an insurance cover against a vehicle that belongs to your brother. You are not benefiting directly. If the lot the loss occurs, you will not suffer the loss directly. So principle of insurable interest requires the insured to take a cover against the property that she is having, he or she is having direct gain from. And if the loss occurs, he is going to suffer direct losses. You cannot take an insurance cover against your brother's wife. You don't benefit directly from your brother's wife. It is your brother who benefits. That is the principle of insurable interest. Principle number five is the principle of proximate cause. Pri principle of proximate cause. According to the principle of proximate cause, you only insure, you are only compensated by the insurance company if the loss that has occurred is close to the risk insured against. An example, for instance, you cannot be compensated if you had taken an insurance cover against damage of your property by fire if the property is damaged by water. Get this, proximate cause. You only get compensation if the loss that has occurred is the risk insured against or is close to the risk insured against. And an example is, if the property was damaged by fire, and uh, that, that is, it was damaged by fire, and you are taken an insurance cover against damage by water, you will not be compensated. Lastly, we have the principle of contribution. The principle of contribution. My dear students, according to the principle of contribution, this applies whereby an insured has taken an insurance cover with more than one insurance company to, to cover the same risk. Get this? Principle of contribution applies when an insured has covered the same risk with different insurance companies. Let's say an insured has covered a uh, risk, again, uh, that is damage of property again, uh, by fire, that is with CIC Insurance Company, and with Kelvin and Sons, with Kelvin and Sons Insurance Company, Insurance Company. So this insured has suffered, has, has covered his goods against damaged by fire with CIC and Kelvin and Sons Insurance Company. So if the loss occurs, the two companies will contribute to compensate the insured. If the loss was 200,000, some of you will say that each company will give the insured 200,000, 200,000. No. The contribution will be according to the ratio of premiums you are paying. Maybe you are paying more premiums in Kelvin and Sun Insurance Company than in CIC. So the two companies will come together and now they will calculate the amount of compensation that each company is supposed to contribute. If you are paying equal amount of premiums to both companies, then CIC will pay you 100,000 and Kelvin and Sons will pay you 100,000 because they want to return you back to your former financial position according to the principle of indemnity. They don't want you to benefit. It's to return you back to your former financial position is to return you back to your former financial position. My dear students, uh, this, this topic is wide and we've covered uh, more than a half. Maybe in the next lesson, we'll cover whatever is remaining. I hope that you've understood everything that we have discussed. My dear student, I, Teacher Kelvin Budinyambura, have written a book that is Never Give Up, I'm an author. 
This book is a very encouraging book to adults, to students, to everyone. Because in most circumstances of life, people have different afflictions that they go through. People have different things that make them to get discouraged. Maybe you have been sick and in hospital for long. Maybe you have been in financial constraint. Maybe you have suffering rejection and opposition. This book is going to change your life if you read it. Never give up. It is a play on overcoming challenges of life. In life, there are so many circumstances that makes people want to give up, or some give up. God has always been at our reach in times of afflictions to answer and rescue us to bounce back again. When it comes to challenges on earth, all I need is Jesus. When you go through the valley of Shandu, of death, you should never be afraid because God will take you to other side of the valley through source of healing, from which true source of healing comes from. Learning how never to give up, dealing with shameful scenarios, become the change you need, how to believe in God in the midst of chaos, God will fulfill his purpose in your life, attitude changes your destiny, overcoming fear of failure, the healing power of God remaining focused. Read, never give up, and your life will never be the same again, uh, and uh, God is going to bless you. Otherwise, I wish you all the best. I wish all the Form 4s in Kenya all the best in their uh, KCSC, and I wish my dear students in Bethlehem Senior School Form 4s all the best in their studies. May God bless you, and may God, God's presence always be upon you, even as you prepare and as you do your KCSC this month and next month. God bless you. My name is Teacher Kelvin Budi Wanyabura. I'm born again. Christ is my personal savior. Never forget to pray before you do anything. God bless you.